Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for those new here, hi, my name is Jenny. I'm a fourth year medical student and I just finished up my ophthalmology rotation. Here we have a special guest, his name is Steve. He was probably a magician in some past life. So he's here to help me explain to you a little bit about what I've learned in my ophthalmology rotation. So if you're interested, please keep on watching. So in practice, a lot of my patients get confused between an optometrist and an ophthalmologist. Um, an optometrist, you would have to go, after you graduate college, you go to four more years of school to become an optometrist. Specifically, there's a specific school for that. And then an ophthalmologist, you, after college, you go to four years of medical school, then you go to um, one year of internship and then three years of residency for surgery. So if you want to summarize it, an optometrist is someone who is a doctor of the eye and an ophthalmologist is also a doctor of the eye but you would consider him or her more of a surgeon of the eye. Both of them could see eye pathology but only an ophthalmologist can um, do surgery on your eyes. Or so those are the two differences. So a lot of you have been commenting and saying that you guys are really interested in surgery and you know you want to become a surgeon and um, that you want to go to medical school to become a surgeon. Well, there's lots of different subspecialties within surgery. There's general surgery, which is a five-year um, residency. There's ophthalmology and there and there's uh, plastic surgery, there's vascular surgery, there's orthopedics, there's so many different types of surgeries. So I want you guys to do your research and um, keep, your, keep your minds open to all the different types and maybe even all the different types of medicine. So I know I'm, I'm like all over the place right now. And so there's certain things that I feel will help everyone in medicine even if you're not going to become an ophthalmologist. So in so when you get into medical school, they give you one of these things. This is called an ophthalmoscope. And basically, they give it to you wrapped in a cute little box, and they're like, here you go. And you just have to figure it out how to use it on your own. And this is for, to look into the eye and see any the potential to see pathologies. And um, during these two weeks, the ophthalmologist taught me a very easy way, you can even say the right way, to use this. So I'm going to ask my assistant Steve to help me out on this part. So this is your ophthalmoscope. You have different settings. So let's turn it on. This button in the front or this, um, this little knob in the front, you would turn it and that changes the size of your, um, your light. And you would do this depending on how dilated their pupil was. So say you're in the clinic and they're not dilated, you would definitely you would probably use the smallest circle. And then you would and this allows you to evaluate your patient easier. Okay. And then these numbers, I don't know if you guys can see it. Zero is is basically if they have 2020 vision. The green numbers are positive, so that means they're farsighted. And then the negative numbers means that they're nearsighted. Easiest way to check a patient, say they brought in their glasses, you can hold it over print. And if the print is small, that means it's a negative number, they're nearsighted. If the print is big, that means they're farsighted and the numbers will be green. So yeah, once you have that, you can examine your patient. And so even if you didn't have the right number on there, so you actually you would actually examine your patients like this and then use this dial to focus. And then you're ready. So say that um, he's dilated. So we're on the right setting for his eye dilation and um, say he is 20-20 vision, so I would be at the zero. And then if I asked him to look up at the corner of the room, this is his left eye, looking up at the left corner, I would, 
I would then use my left eye to look at his. And in doing this, it enables me to see his optic nerve. And this you can see the cup, disc to cup ratio. And then I would ask him to look directly into my light. And that would enable me to visualize his macula. And then you would go on the other side and do the same thing. On the right eye, you would use your right eye. On the left eye, you would use your left eye. And the reason why you do that is because... <laughs> I hope you guys can see this. So the reason why you don't do, say, I only say I only use my right eye to look in both his eyes. It's very awkward for me to look into his left eye with my right eye because it'll just look like, you know, to, we're kissing. We're, we're doing the nosy. And that's just within, you know, like there needs to be space between you and your patient, no matter how comfortable you are. So yeah. And so let's bring you in and I'll show you what I mean by seeing the optic nerve. So here you can see this is the optic nerve and if you were looking straight at Steve you would not see his optic nerve. This is where the macula is. So when he looks at the corner of the room and you're looking at this angle, this enables you to see the optic nerve and then he can look directly at you and then you would see the macula. This is the easiest way to see his eye pathology. Thank you, Steve. Another thing that I learned are some eye pathologies. I went over this quite quickly on my Snapchat, but I wanted to go into further depth. There's some great pictures I'm gonna show you guys, and it actually shows what the patient sees when they have this particular pathology. Um, so let's move on to that. So here are some of the more common things that people complain about when coming into an ophthalmologist's office. So let's start with myopia and that just means nearsighted vision. They can't see far away. While hyperopia means that they're farsighted, they can't see from up close. So if you have nearsighted vision, your eye shape is actually too long, and so the light rays actually focus in front of the retina. As compared to farsighted vision, your eye shape would be too short, so the light rays would focus behind the retina. For patients who have retinal detachment, they usually complain of vision loss, described as a curtain being pulled across their eyes. This can be differentiated from vitriol collapse because patients will usually describe flashes of light and floaters. The vitreous is a gelatinous material that actually gives support to the retina, and once it collapses, it can pull the retina and cause detachment, and this is where you would get the vision loss. Vision loss due to glaucoma is usually so gradual that patients don't usually notice it until it is very progressive and you would have this peripheral vision loss or tunnel vision. The eye normally produces fluid that circulates from the posterior to the anterior chamber through channels. It's important because it gives the eye nutrients but it also controls pressure. As the pressure increases, if any of these channels are blocked, it can cause damage to the optic nerve and hence create this tunnel vision effect. People with cataracts would complain of glare and difficulty seeing at night. This is caused by the yellowing or discoloration of the lens itself. People with macular degeneration would complain of a blurred central vision, or sometimes they would complain that straight lines seem bent. We're unsure of what actually causes macular degeneration, but we do know that there is some genetic component. Live it up, live it up, live it up. So that's all I have um, for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Oh, I am actually have two weeks off for winter break. And I'm going to be doing a lot of traveling. And so hopefully you guys will be able to see what vacation is like as a med student. Um, it's not all work. It's 
it's some good times too. So I hope you guys will enjoy that video as well. Um, stay tuned and peace. Thank you.